blogging a reason to shower. Who knew? Glad to have you back. It's exciting for you to be here. Um, I don't want to always promise every vlog will be as fun as this one. And I don't want to degrade myself and do something silly like dance with the sheep. I mean, we're not at that level of ridiculousness, are we? Good job, buddy. Actors. Okay, guys, it's a question and comment episode. So to begin, I have my notebook here where I wrote down some of your comments and thoughts, and we're going to go over them today. First question is from Meg Pasca. Talk about your winter prep. Um, okay, so Cold Antler Farm is... A neat combination of new and old. The best of both worlds. I'm blogging to you from a very advanced piece of technology and um, I also heat my house with wood which is you know what we did before the Bronze Age. So firewood and hay is winter prep for me. It's the most important things of the entire July through fall. Right now I have two cores. I'm gonna need another um, one and a half, two, to get through all the winter. Let's see, hay is really important and I don't have storage for all the bales I need. So what happens is I have what are called hay banks. Those are friends with big barns that I buy hay and store in their barn and collect it by the truckload over the year. So winter prep is buying and securing hay and getting it stored in the hay banks. It is getting firewood loaded and stacked, dry firewood, very important. And what else is there that I do for winter prep? Well. I put up a lot of food, which is kind of old-fashioned, but my larder is packed for winter. I have coffee by 10 or 15 pounds. I have stuff I've canned over the year. I have uh, stuff I just buy in, in bulk. So I have like number 10 cans of things like salt and pepper. Uh, number 10 is a big, a big can. It's like the kind of can you can hurt somebody with. Um, so that's winter prep. You know, you gotta eat, you gotta be warm, and everyone else that lives here, meaning animals, has to eat and be warm. Next comment comes from Kyle L. A vote for full color vlogs is a vote for America. You don't want a terrorist to win, do you? No, Kyle, I don't. But I'm gonna let Gibson take care of this one. Gibson? Okay, Daisy G says, what do you wish you knew before you bought your farm? Really good question, Daisy, and the serious answer is, I wish I knew before I bought my farm. I didn't have to buy a farm. You don't need to own land to farm. You don't even need to own a backyard to farm. To farm, you need to want to farm. You need to have that desire more than any other occupation, because as soon as you have a plan B, you go with plan B. It's not an easy life. Whether you're homesteading with six chickens in Arizona or you have 600 acres in upstate New York, it doesn't matter. But if you want to farm, don't make buying the farm be the first step. I was farming in Idaho. I was farming in Vermont. I was farming anywhere that I grew food. And there are snobs that say you're only farming if you have a certain red wing work boot and a certain flannel shirt and you don't go to the office and you don't have an off-farm job or you do have an off-farm job because only real farmers work other jobs. It's, it, there's so many things out there. Here's what farming is. Farming is growing food and eating it. All right? So you can be in a Chicago apartment and be a farmer. You can be in your backyard in Philadelphia and be a farmer. Or you can be on a ranch that spans to the horizon of Wyoming and be a farmer. Farming is here. That's where it is, all right? And start today. Don't put it off. Go online, uh, read some forums, get some books in the library. You don't have to spend any money. Uh, get some dirt from outside or your friend's backyard or from the hardware store. Plant something. Grow it in your windowsill and eat it. And you're already on your way. If you can find a way to go to the farmer's market and buy uh, tomatoes or berries, 
and get to a community kitchen and turn that into a value-added product like jam or pies or sell it to a local farm stand, you're making money off of the work of your own hands. That's farming. So what do I wish I knew before I bought my farm? I wish I believed in myself enough to farm without a mortgage because as much as I love this place and I wouldn't change anything, I'm very hindranced by debt just the 30-year mortgage, as well as other things. I am still paying off my truck. I just paid off Merlin. Um, my goal is to be debt-free, so uh, you already are debt-free if you don't have a farm, at least land debt-free. So intern, apprentice, learn, rent land. You can do a whole bunch of things. You may have a neighbor with 600 acres that would love to have the ag tax exemption. There's a lot of options. Just don't let Owning a piece of paper that says you own land be what stops you. The only thing that's stopping you is you. And if you can convince yourself to stop, you convince yourself to start. Okay guys, that's another vlog episode. Thank you so much for watching. Remember, you can uh, leave a comment to ask questions for the next episode. You can give me ideas through email. My email is jenna at itsafarwalk.com. You can follow me on Twitter at Antler Farm. You can ask Gibson questions as well. He would love to have his own segment. He's kind of a diva. Let's see, what else? Uh, thank you for everyone who watched last episode. We've almost hit 500 subscribers on my YouTube channel. So we're going to keep this thing going as long as you guys want to keep seeing them. So please, uh, share, tell your friends. If you have questions, concerns, comments, send them in. We'll talk about them. I'm going to stop torturing the sheepdog and let him uh, do a little bit of herding. All right, guys. Thank you so much. And if you can't, uh, be good, be safe.